And now it's time for another special feature. Pickle. What the fuck on this? With the NES, PlayStation, Star Wars, cartoons, and any TV. Do you like to think who would win in a fight between Batman and the Master Chief? Comics, games, movies, music, and TV. They're gonna tell you everything you need. Superheroes or nothing got your back. They're gonna save the world of geeks. What's going on? It is This Week in Geeks Holiday Gift Guide 2019. I am one of your hosts for this fantastic holiday season. I am, of course, Mike the Birdman Dog, but I'm not alone as I decide to invade Santa's workshop and uh, see what we can find for you, us geeks, dorks, and dweebs out there. I'm joined with the man in the chair from Kitchener himself. The Krampus, Alex. That's right. So anyway, guys, we are here to talk about sort of our picks from the things we've had a chance to purchase ourselves, been given for a review, or things we've had a chance to take a look at over the past year on the show of Twig or Turtle Treasure to kind of give you our ideas what you can possibly get for those uh, that you may be shopping for this holiday season. We'll be including links in the show notes, so you'll be able to buy these from various websites, but most likely uh, Amazon.com or .ca or directly from the manufacturer uh, themselves. So uh, hopefully you will uh, find something here for your friends, family, coworkers, or whatever. And uh, the idea is to not have as long running a show as we did last year, which was debatably way too fucking long uh, so we're gonna yeah, kind of do yeah. things more rapid fire this year <laughs> we we did sort of discuss that uh, last year um it was a gift guide but also almost like an end of year special and we're doing that separate this year so like our picks for best things of the year sort of thing that's going to be a separate uh you know special that we do when we're on our hiatus whereas this is just simply you, you need to get in what you know what's the best shit we can buy <laughs> yeah exactly so without any further ado we're going to start things off kind of a little bit slower but in sort of a music slash miscellaneous category sort of things we didn't know quite where to put these and the first uh pick comes from me uh from activision slash blizzard and uh this is lego overwatch stuff and these are fantastic lego sets from the overwatch kind of universe uh activision sent me a um kit of bastion who is the living turret uh, basically, he's a survivor from the Omec Wars, if I remember that correctly, in the really cool animated short. And uh, <clears throat> I can't remember how many pieces the kit is right off the top of my head, but this is something you should be able to do in like half an hour, an hour at most. Uh, stands pretty cool, looks really neat. Um, and I do think that's a particularly nice piece, especially if you are into the Overwatch scene, as Overwatch 2 got announced at uh, BlizzCon this year. And don't know when that's coming out, but we'll see what happens. Uh, the next thing that I, I want to talk about is this one. If you're into kind of cubicle oddities, if you have a particular fandom or a franchise that you're a fan of, um, you may want to check out this next thing. And they're kind of in the same vein as Funko Pops, but sort of not at the same time. These are uh, they're tubs and they are cosplaying ducks, um, for lack of a better uh, description there. And these are done by uh, Numbskulls. They're T-U-B-B-Z, and they have various licenses. I got sent uh, Cade 6 from Destiny 2, and I also have Dr. Uh, N. Sane and Dr. N. Gen, or N. Gen uh, from the Crash Bandicoot series. Uh, of cosplaying ducks and there's like Ghostbusters ones, there's Street Fighter ones I think there's Skyrim, there's Fallout all sorts of various different licenses, so if you wanted something a little bit different for your office space or your gaming room I don't think these are a terrible buy because they're relatively unique in the marketplace and they're not as 
generic looking as Funko Pops are because I think I'm fun code out. All things. I mean, the last one I bought, I think, was 2017. So, um, and, and, and I'm in the same boat. Like, the, there's only so much you can do with them before it becomes repetitive and kind of boring. So the, these are exactly. a little different, and they're. I mean, they're right up your alley. Like, yeah, all you, exactly. all you need now is like like Psyduck dressed as Spider Man or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if. If I had to pick one license that stands out to me, I think the Fallout ducks look really cool, and I really wish they'd sent me the Ghostbusters ducks, but now I have a nice selection of bad guys from Crash Bandicoot and the best guy from Destiny 2. So, Alex, what is uh, your pick in this category? Uh, I I had one initially, but I do have sort of a second because I didn't know where to put it. Uh, I've been reviewing uh, a service called BritBox for about a week and a half now. Uh, it's a streaming service, just like uh, Netflix or, or uh, Hulu or anything like that, but it's strictly uh, British uh, like mystery shows, the stuff you used to see on like PBS, uh, as well as classic Doctor Who. They have everything up in, uh, up until the 90s on there. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, exactly. So like, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a joint venture between um, ITV and BBC, the two biggest television networks there. Uh, and it's been working pretty good. Like I've... I've I've given it a watch on a whole bunch of different uh, programs, and they have everything except the only thing they don't have that I would like is uh, Coronation Street. And that's because uh, as a kid, my family used to watch it, and I, it's like the one soap opera that was like worth it. <laughs> but uh, it, it's, I've been checking it out, and it's a pretty good service, and it's you know uh, priced competitively depending on what country you're in, pretty much the same as anywhere else. If you have, uh, like in my case, it's I watch these shows and. I'll then talk to my grandmother who watches them because she's always been super into the, the um, like the British mysteries and the British dramas and all that. So if you're looking to gift somebody a subscription service, especially like it, it skews in the older age, I guess, like basically it, it's, it's grandma and grandpa shows and, and uh, as well as Doctor Who. So if you're looking to give somebody a subscription service, that may be something to look into. Um, and, the uh, the main thing I wanted to talk about here was, uh, you remember a little while back when I got that uh, Transformers the original series uh, soundtrack? Yes. Yes. So, uh, and I'm, I'm sort of highlighting it, but not just that. It's everything that uh, Enjoy the Ride slash Enjoy the Tune Records has. Uh, if you're you know a nerd, geeky person, you're getting back into like vinyl collecting, which is becoming surprisingly popular. Uh, there was an article that came out that. Uh, recently that vinyl is now outselling CDs, <laughs> which is insane. Um, but I guess it, it's because it's the, you know, the collector's item aspect and now you got all these cool vinyls with different colors. Uh, they have everything from like uh, Elvira uh, records to uh, they had a Mortal Kombat uh, soundtrack and it's like all the, the official arcade music sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you check out Enjoy the Ride uh, records, Basically, you can't go wrong with anything there, but if you are a Transformers fan, that Transformers uh, classic music from the Transformers vinyl is totally worth it. Fantastic stuff. So moving on to our next category, this one's almost going to be exclusively me talking, and most of these come from DK Publishing, but I'll denote where they don't. But all three of the Star Wars books that I'm going to talk about right now do come from DK Publishing. So big thanks to Chris for sending these over for us for review because... Uh, The Rise of Skywalker comes out in just a few short weeks, and The Mandalorian has pretty much taken over the world as the most popular streaming show right now. Well, it's time to talk a little bit of Star Wars, and I got three books for the Holiday Gift Guide that I think uh, highlight different aspects of of the fandom that you should probably be taking a look at. And the first one I I want to highlight this year is... um, I am C-3PO, The Inside Story by Anthony Daniels. This has a foreword by J.J. Abrams. Um, And it kind of goes into Anthony Daniels, and I'm actually going to quote the book jacket here. Daniels tells a riveting, humorous, and often moving tale of life on and off the sets of all nine Star Wars movies, including Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, giving fascinating new insights into that galaxy far, far away. Because this is the end of 
the Skywalker saga. This is the end of modern Star Wars. Obviously, it's not the end of the Star Wars brand. But to have a guy who's been there since 1977 to 2019, he's going to have a lot of stories. He's always been the dude in the costume. He's always been the voice of 3PO, like even on droids, even on any of the number of different... Uh, animated projects like uh the clone wars he's been involved in some capacity so this is kind of his story and that's kind of neat to see a life lived inside a gold suit for 40 something years so that's pretty cool so that's something that i'm going to recommend for somebody who wants a slice of real life star wars the next one i'm going to take a look at is more of a sort of in the same vein of um the Zombie Survival Handbook, which was written by Max Brooks. This one is uh, how not to get eaten by Ewoks and other galactic survival skills. Sort of a handbook of how to survive in the universe of Star Wars. Um, would you survive in the spice mines of Kessel? Could you escape a giant space slug? Um, from the back of the book, it says, from tackling extreme weather and finding shelter to avoiding societal pitfalls, learn what you can to stay alive in a galaxy far, far away. This is um, weird, um, stupid, and I dig it. I say this is perfect reading if you have a really long commute, or if, for frankly... I thought you were going to say something different. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm totally going there. This is great for if you have a bathroom reader. This is great bathroom reading. Like, so this, this huh. is like that those all, all those trivia books or uh, what was that? The great bathroom reader things where it's all uh, Uncle yeah. Dave's or whatever they're called or something or Uncle... Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm you know, yeah, talking about? Exactly. Those old, those old bath where they had like weird facts and all that. That does sound like something you'd want to have there or like uh, on the coffee table when people come over. Yeah, exactly. I think that's kind of cool, and that's why I'm particularly fond of this book. Uh, it also is really affordable, as you'll see when you click the link below. I think it's worth it. But the big bad boy that I really want to recommend, and this one really surprised me how up-to-date this was, it's the Ultimate Star Wars New Edition, and it has a foreword by, uh, as we've mentioned, uh, Anthony Daniels, who plays C-3PO, and this journeys from Star Wars 1977 all the way to the Rise of Skywalker. And it doesn't spoil anything, but it does give you insights, uh, particular, particularly things like the Knights of Ren, um, the Sith Trooper, um, stuff like that. It gives you a little bit of hints as to who and how these new characters kind of fit into the world. It gives you wonderful updates on technology, characters. It covers the animated series like Clone Wars, Rebels. The only thing it doesn't include, at least I, when I kind of glance through it, it doesn't have anything from Jedi Fallen Order, which is considered canon, but that's a fairly new game. It just came out last month. This book is probably in production, and they probably it's probably just one of those omissions they just didn't think about and that's okay um but it is really really well done and it, it was kind of a nice primer kind of going into rise of skywalker because i forgot that ray's lightsaber exploded during last um jedi that completely slipped my mind and when i was reading the um the sidebar on the lightsaber i was like oh that really did happen crap i i forgot that um so i think this is a must have for anybody who wants to have technology characters locations aliens and all that type of information uh at your fingertips the fact that it's so up to date this will probably be the definitive edition you might get one later on down the road after rise of skywalker but as of right now, this is your best bet. And I think it's a really fantastic addition to anybody's Star Wars uh, library. So moving on to, I believe, Alex. Uh, no, I still got two more picks here. Yes, you do. <laughs> uh, this one is something that I recommended a few weeks ago on the show. And this one is the Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart Kick from R. Talsorian. And this is the role-playing game based upon Cyberpunk 2020, but takes place before Cyberpunk 2077, done by CD Projekt Red, which comes out uh, April of next year for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and the uh, PC. So this box set kind of sets the world up leading up to 2077, but stops around 2040 something give or take kind of gives you an idea on where the world sits after the after the last corporate war why the world is known as the red 
basically um there was uh people were slinging meteors at the planet at one time there was a nuke that went off in night city they uh they kind of suspect what happened to johnny silverhand and some of the other uh major players in the world but it gives you a nice setup to play in the world of cyberpunk it streamlines the rules a little bit um it pretty much boils down to skill stat d10 plus a difficulty value so it's really easy to understand there's a cool adventure in it called the apartment there's some miniatures in there that 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 like you can punch out though they are not necessary for play we may be playing this on the on the cambridge chronicles in the new year um so yeah i really really like that i think that's pretty cool so you can find that um i'm pretty sure i found it on amazon.com uh as it is sold out on the r talsorian website so be looking for that i think it's fantastic my last pick here is a more recent edition and this comes to us from wizards of the coast and this is another Dungeons and Dragons um, book, but not like um, the other ones. Most of the books have been adventures or giving you different rule sets. The closest thing you got to this would be Curse of Strahd, which was an adventure, though kind of a campaign setting for Ravenloft, though not really. This one is a full campaign setting, and this is uh, this one goes back to D and D Fourth Edition. Or was it maybe 3.5? I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's called Eberron Rising from the Last War. And it basically is um, Dungeons & Dragons meets Final Fantasy VI. Or at least that's what it makes me think of that. Like there's trains that run on lightning. There's like Magitek armor. There's like detective noir type shit there's like different warring houses and clans and it's really kind of cool like i think this is something that if you had the right player group who was willing to buy into your world you could do something really really fantastic with this in fact i'd like to see an eberron campaign done on an actual play podcast so if anybody knows of any eberron campaign uh podcasts let me know i'm, I'm actually kind of curious to hear how those worlds run um so yeah that's my selections from the world of the literary and alex what do you got next uh I'm, we may as well go into i guess electronics because that's going to be mostly me <laughs> yeah um we do have a, a special mention from mr christopher or is he still going by that now Yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> For now. Uh, I know uh, we, we talked uh, about gaming and stuff with him. I don't think he has anything that he said he, to extra add to our current guide. but uh, Maybe Sekiro, he, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll have to talk about that. And I know he hasn't even playing a heck of a ton of uh, WoW Classic. I think so. So I guess if you're an old school um, MMO guy, that's maybe something to check out. Uh, but... Uh, he did want to mention in the electronics that uh, he picked up a uh, one of those uh, fire sticks. I don't know if he has the uh, the HD or the 4K one, but I, I can verify like the the regular HD one. Uh, we picked one up from my uh, grandmother's house, and it is pretty slick, uh, especially if you have Prime, uh, because it's just it's integrated completely with it. So. Uh, if you're looking for uh, like a simple, easy to use streaming thing, I know they had it on sale for Black Friday. That I think they had it down to 25 bucks for the the 1080p edition, and Amazon introduced a new uh, a, a, like a new payment plan for it, where you can pay five bucks a month off your account. Oh, yeah. So and and they, there's no interest. It's like five payments of five bucks, and that, that's they still have that on the website, but. Um, it's sold out until January now. <laughs> oh, well, it says, it says, uh, you know, we'll ship on or before then. It's just going to depend on when they get the next shipment of like a million of them in, right? Cause they sold so many. Uh, mm-hmm. but I know, uh, keeping in line with the streaming, uh, the other alternatives out there, uh, I had covered the Roku express, uh, as well as, uh, the, uh, streaming stick plus the, the mid range one is sort of, I feel it's sort of lost. <laughs> it's like, it's. There, because there, there's differences of like ten to fifteen dollar increments between them, and the middle one is like it has most of the features you want, but not maybe everything you'd want. So either, uh, if you're looking for something just to hook up an extra TV in a room, or uh, in the case of like you know hooking up grandma's TV, uh, go with a Roku Express because it's up to 1080p. Uh, it's dirt cheap. You're going to be paying no matter where you go under forty bucks, uh, and it uh, it just sort of 
just works. Like if you don't have a smart TV or smart device or anything else, that's where, what you want to go with. Uh, it doesn't do any fancy bells or whistles like HDR or 4K, all that, but you don't necessarily need it for a small TV or an extra one. As far as the Streaming Stick Plus, that's the one with all the bells and whistles and has the 5G network support. Uh, so if you like the Roku environment and you don't have a smart TV, that either of those will do you well. Uh, as far as the like top tier media box you can get right now, it's definitely the, the NVIDIA Shield TV. Uh, now, I didn't get the Pro version, uh, which is the one that is in the, the similar form factor as the previous edition that came out two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it has all the USB ports. I got the uh, one that looks like a toilet paper tube. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's literally the best way I can describe it. It's it's the form factor of a toilet paper tube. Um, it it just it's it's interesting because it has a fan in it and it blows straight through. So it's actually pretty neat, like designed well. Um, the only thing is it doesn't have any USB ports, so you have to get yourself a decent sized micro SD card. I have a 200 gig, so no problem there. And it, and that's only if you want to put on your own videos, your own media, your own games, that sort of stuff extra um because you can stream a lot of stuff through uh their streaming services but it basically i can throw anything at it uh, you want to you want to put on a 4k video that has hdr no stutter oh you want to jump around anywhere in the video and have zero stutter that's basically the device you want uh, i also was uh, doing some uh, like extended uh emulation as well as regular like uh, google play store game downloads on it and I had zero issues. Like it, it's it's like playing it on a PC, which was interesting because I didn't think Android boxes could do that. Like it plays games that were that put like most any other system to shame, unless you've got like an actual gaming PC, which is kind of surprising for how tiny it is. Uh, and I've been using it actually to take back and forth when I visit my mom because I'm like because at her place, uh, if I want to play any media like or any extra games, there's like nothing there but an old PS3, which is fine, but. You can't do everything you want to do on a PS3. <laughs> so uh, I just like the fact that it's portable. I can throw it in my backpack and it it doesn't, you know, get dinged up or anything. You can I basically put it into a, a, one of my dice, uh, velvet dice bags. <laughs> That's how I store it. Um, so if and pricing wise, you know, if you're looking for something under 40 bucks, the Roku Express is great. If you're looking for something in the 60, 70 dollar range. The Streaming Stick Plus is great. If you're looking for the versatility of like basically having a PC, but having just a really, really high-end streaming platform, then the Shield TV costs you about 200 bucks. You might get a sale on somewhere. Uh, definitely worth it. it. Like, There's a reason it costs that much, and it's because it's better than everything else. <laughs> um, and anything else that I've got under electronics, uh, I have reviewed you know endless headphones this year, as you know. <laughs> and... Uh, the two best things right now are uh, wireless, like noise canceling is, is, is a big thing now that you can get true wireless noise canceling headphones, as well as the purely wireless earbuds, ones where there's no wires whatsoever. So the two that I would recommend out of everything I touched this year were the Skull Candy Method ANC noise canceling. Those are the traditional uh, wireless Bluetooth uh, headphones where the headphones themselves are connected by a single wire. And, you know, you put it around your neck or whatever. It's good for, like, jogging and all that sort of stuff uh, because it has the noise-canceling aspect to it, and they sounded pretty good, and they had a good battery life. Uh, but the go-to daily drivers that I would recommend, if you're looking for, like, I guess, what do they call AirPods, you know? Yeah. If you're looking for something that doesn't cost $500, <laughs> you can go with the Creative Outlier Airs. They're, like, a quarter of that price. <laughs> And provide uh, better quality than the AirPods. Sorry, Apple, but they just do. Um, they've been my daily drivers from when I go out and I'm going grocery shopping, taking the bus anywhere. Uh, and you get uh, six to eight hours per charge on them. And I, I just keep them in my pocket, of, like everywhere I go. Uh, I still am somebody who likes wired headphones uh, when I'm at home. But for on the go, like I've, I've been totally converted. And if, if you're looking for something that isn't going to break the bank, Either of those, the Creative Outlier Airs or the Skull Candy Method, uh, they're going to be at 100 bucks or less, depending on when they're on sale, and they're totally worth it. Fantastic. Okay, so I guess kind of moving on to our next category, we're going to take a look at movies and television this year that we want to recommend. These are obviously will be more uh, stocking stuffer type things, but, you know, sometimes these might just be cool gifts for people in your life that, uh, you know, these are things that we 
recommend. Uh, first one that I want to recommend comes to us from Warner Brothers Home Enter Entertainment, and that's the movie Shazam. This movie surprised the ever living hell out of me. Um, I did not expect this movie to be this good. Um, I mean, the DC Expanded Universe has had its issues, um, from the mythical Does the Snyder Cut Exist to surprise hits like Aquaman and, you know, whatever's going on with Superman and Batfleck and all that sh shenanigans. Um, Shazam kind of flew under the radar, and when it came out, Zachary Levi delivered probably one of the best superhero performances I've seen in a long time. To me, that guy is Shazam. Like, he is the embodiment of the joy that that character is like he plays a great Billy Bastion growing up into this superhero guy. And I can't wait till Shazam two comes out. I was really happy to watch this movie. And I think this is a great family movie. And I guess technically it's a Christmas movie because the climax happens at Christmas. Does it not? Yeah. yeah. In, in the same realm as, uh, Batman as, returns or as, no, as like Die Hard, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's, uh, is it a Christmas movie in that the entire theme is Christmas? No. Is it a Christmas movie as in it's themed around Christmas? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I really think you should check out Sh Shazam. Um, it's uh, underappreciated, and I really think you should check that out. My next pick comes to us again from Warner Brothers Home Entertainment. This one came out in theaters in September to a lot of fanfare, and it reviewed really, really, really well, although arguably it was a little too long. But it concludes the story of Stephen King's It. So I'm recommending It Chapter 2 on Blu-ray. And main reasons for this, the movie itself is really entertaining. I think the casting was fantastic from the kids to the adults. Um, the Blu-ray itself has 240-ish uh, minute documentaries uh, on the production of It. There's also a couple of featurettes. They actually talk with Stephen King himself about uh, kind of cameoing in the movie. Sorry, I've got the hiccups. Um, and uh, there's some kind of cute stories from that. And it's just, it's cool to see a Stephen King movie get the proper treatment because it's been so many years since we've gotten a really, really good adaptation. And say what you will about Dr. Sleep, I think it was the better Stephen King movie this year. Um, but I really enjoyed it, so I think you should check it out. Plus, Bill Sarsgaard as Pennywise the Dancing Clown is probably one of the best performances of the decade in terms of how much he made clowns legitimately scary again. Um, my next pick comes to us from Paramount Home Entertainment, and this movie, again, took me by surprise how much fun it was. Uh, and that's Rocket Man, and that's the Elton John biopic. Um, the music just, for lack of a better phrase, inspired me, really took me away, really made me go look him out on Spotify, get into some of the kind of playlists, the best of, and kind of look at some of his career from a different angle. And while the movie does sanitize some aspects of his career, it's still remarkably entertaining. And it ends on my favorite Elton John song of all time, which is I'm Still Standing. Um... And it kind of brings a tear to my eye with the performance in that movie, in that song. It's just, it's amazingly well done. Plus some great special features. The songs are on there. Like you can sing along. Me and Blair were singing along with it. And uh, I really wish I'd seen this in theaters um, because it was just such a fantastically entertaining time. Uh, finally, coming to us uh, once again from Warner Bros. Home Entertainment, uh, probably the best video game movie that's been made so far because it respects the source material, had a fantastic cast with Justice Smith, Ryan Reynolds, and um, Bill Nighley. Mortal Kombat, no. Uh, I am talking about Detective Pikachu. Um, I think a lot of people were not sure what to think about this. I mean, Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu, we're thinking, oh, it's just Deadpool. And I remember people were lobbying for having... Danny DeVito voice Pikachu, which would have also been pretty funny, but no, Ryan you know that that would have been great. Sorry if they had made that a special feature, literally oh, have yeah. an, or, have him audio dub it in. The money they would have made extra from sales of that would have justified oh, yeah. paying Danny DeVito just to dub the lines. 
Oh yeah, like 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 just have him do one or two iconic scenes for the special features. That would have been great. Um, but it's such a fantastically well done video game movie it's something kids can enjoy it's something adults can enjoy um the credit sequence in this movie is taken from the manga and the video games it even has a remixed version of like the red and blue and yellow themes um and it it's cool to see all these pokemon you grew up with from generation one two and whatever it is now pokemon sword and shield they aren't in it Thank God for that. Um, and it's just, it's Pokemon pure joy. And uh, my boy Psyduck got his due. And uh, I'm very happy about that. And I'm not going to lie, that kind of tilts this uh, recommendation a little bit. Because Psyduck getting his feet rubbed is one of my favorite scenes of the entire year. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to recommend for movies this year. Cool, cool. And I, I've got a few, you know, me, I'm, I'm more of the TV guy. Uh, but uh, starting off, I, I didn't think that Forever Night was ever going to get re-released on DVD. Do you remember Forever Night? I do. That's the Vampire Cop, right? Vampire Cop Show. One of the first uh, co-productions that they made up in Vancouver when, you know, it was basically that. Uh, Forever Night and uh, Highlander the series basically started the Vancouver television, like, boom of the the 90s uh and sony had put out the series in three volumes oh probably what 12 years ago 13 years ago and the third volume was so like underprinted and undersold initially that it was selling in the aftermarket for like 500 oh, wow! <laughs> like because people just like and it was like a case of the show dvds everything came out at a time before piracy was rampant so it just wasn't available, even like to stream legally, let alone finding, you know, even like taped VHS copies. You couldn't find anything of that. So when Mill Creek announced that they were putting out the complete series, I went, oh, please Yoink. send, please send. Alex would like to see if, if the quality is any good. And uh, I had had the first volume on uh, from Sony and it's the same quality. I'm like, oh, it's basically the same disc, so I'm happy. And the fact that it basically killed the aftermarket of, of those <laughs> those extremely expensive uh, second and third volumes to the point where I, I remember, you know it's good when the scalpers are complaining that, that, <laughs> that, that their values tank to nothing. <laughs> so uh, the fact that you can get the complete series in one box uh, set that works, and the problem with the original discs, a lot of those early Sony releases, the the discs are starting to separate, you know, where like they, they oh. start to get, like you'll see that occasionally where there's like a bubble that appears in between the plastics of the DVD. It happens a lot more on those. Remember those double sided discs that uh, was Warner used to put out? Yeah. Um, a lot of the, a lot of those two sided DVDs don't work anymore. Same with the ones oh. from Fox, um, because they were manufactured poorly <laughs> in at the beginning of the DVDs, like you know, late '90s, early 2000s. Uh, they weren't paid very well, <laughs> to be honest. So uh, a lot of those are going. And if, if companies aren't releasing re-releases, you're not going to be able to watch them. So luckily, these are single-sided discs done doing uh, you know modern manufacturing process. Uh, and you can get the entire series for less than the price of one of the volumes of, from Sony. So uh, it, it's just fun 90s you know, s- pseudo-supernatural police detective procedural, which is cool. And if you're if you're a bit of a nerd like me, it's it's it, like it's it's kind of the perfect thing like that Highlander, uh, a a, uh, a big thing of a big gulp from Seven Eleven and some Doritos and there's a good weekend. <laughs> uh, as well as uh, that from Mill Creek, there is remember you know Hard Ticket to Hawaii. It's probably the the most well known in the series. But there's the uh, what is it Bullets Babes uh, uh, Guns something. They've they've called it different things over and over and over again. But it's uh, the uh, Andy Sedaris films, those I think most popularly talked about on like the Nostalgia Critic back in the day by all those um, basically all those reviewers. Basically, any online reviewer who thinks they're funny yes, reviews yeah, it, at some point. It reviews Hard Ticket to White. Well, they've gone and they're remastering every single release. There's like 12 movies in the series. Oh, uh, God. Yes. And we've been reviewing them as they come. Uh, they're cheap, like 10, 15 bucks on Blu ray, completely remastered. Uh, with all the special features that they produced previously, and it, it makes a great stocking stuffer for somebody who loves terrible, cheesy, 
uh, R-rated action movies. Uh, as going along with that, we also have a movie that you liked, The Vineyard. Yes, this was a, a Vinegar Syndrome release that me and Alex watched earlier this year and highly recommended, um, especially because of the special features that were put together, because we don't know how much longer we're going to have James Hong on this planet. Um, and I was surprised they got him to do interviews. He talked about it. I think this was his first directorial uh, debut. This was how he put this movie together with almost no money and no budget, no time. And it turned out to be more entertaining than what we thought. Yeah, like quirky weirdness with neat practical effects, all for like less than half a million dollar budget. Yeah, like I just thought it was one of those unexpected horror movie gems that flies under the radar. And Vinegar Syndrome, when they put together a release, they know there's an audience for it. So if you want to check out like late 80s kind of cheesy horror that doesn't insult your intelligence i think this is pretty cool actually yeah uh and i mean like and it's it can be anything else that we've covered from them because for the most part everything they've put out has been pretty good but it's the one that probably stood out the most this year just like last year death row game show was the one that stood out the most absolutely uh, that and if, if you're so looking good. to get if you're looking to try to get two titles from them and you're not sure where to start those two would be great uh now uh for uh, switching back sort of to television, uh, I've been really reviewing the Ultraman series that uh, Mill Creek's been putting out on Blu-ray, and they're slowly but surely working their way forward from the 1960s to today, re releasing every single one. So it's a daunting task, but they're also releasing them at like a ridiculously cheap price considering you're getting 30 or 40 or 50 episodes in some cases fully remastered on Blu-ray for like depending on the sale prices, like 50, 60 bucks per season, uh, which is pretty cool. And, it, you know, it's basically there. There's different types of people out there. You are a Sentai slash Power Rangers guy, right? Yes. Uh, we have friends that are uh, common Rider people or Masked Rider people. I'm an Ultraman guy. <laughs> so uh, it, it's cool to see. And I, I feel like if you like those style of shows, the whole Godzilla slash Tokusatsu, you know, people fighting monsters in, in rubber suits uh, kind of shows, it's good to support making purchases like this. Because think about how cool it would be if Power Rangers, you know, could come out on Blu-ray remastered. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a good start. And the Ultraman series uh, has always been, you know, pretty cool, easy to follow. So I, I, I would recommend that if you're a, you know, a big fan of sci-fi slash Power Rangers type stuff. Uh, and finally, I'm just going to talk about uh, a release that I just got for review recently. That I, uh, I guess this will sort of be my mini review of it. And that's a deadline from uh, our friends over at Film Chest. Now, you know Law & Order, how they you know, rip, or used to at least, rip all of their, um, their storylines from like the headlines of the news. And they still sort of do, but then they have to preface it by saying everything was made up now because they've been sued a couple times. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, this sort of this show predates it. It's uh, a show from the you know mid to late fifties uh, that ran for thirty nine episodes, and they've put out the set. It's it's pretty surprising how remastered it looks. Uh, like it, it, there are scenes that are still a little rough because it's you know tape that's been you know in a vault somewhere for so long. But then there's many many parts and many many episodes that looked pristine enough that they could have been filmed today and, you know, just had the color taken out of it. But it's basically an anthology series where every episode is taken from a real uh, news story. And what they do is uh, it's told from the perspective of the reporter reporting on the actual story. And the reporters in the show, uh, there are actors, but they're playing actual reporters. Like, okay. you know, like I say, you know, there was an investigative reporter for... for um, 60 minutes it would be somebody playing that reporter it would be somebody playing barbara walters and it would and it would be based on an actual story that they published and it for the time there's some pretty violent stuff in there like uh people getting their eyes gouged out or like organ thieves and stuff and this is like in the 50s they're talking about like stuff that you you didn't think you would be able to get away with but because it was syndicated they could you know not every channel would carry it uh and, and it, it's just interesting because it's one of those shows that was long thought sort of lost and then they just like found an archive of it and the the dvd sets like 12 bucks 10 bucks american 
And it's, it's kind of insane considering you get 39 episodes. They're all remastered. There's a, a booklet with a description of each episode. Like it's handled like a high end release, but dirt cheap. So if you like Law and Order or like Dragnet or uh, any of those sort of classic, uh, like real, like it's like a true crime show, but, but like done fictionalized. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it might be worth checking out, especially if you're looking for a stocking stuffer for like uh, your parents or mom or grandma sort of thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So that does that do it for you? That does it for all, all my TV. Like there's so much we could go into, but we'll save those like, you know, what our other favorite things were for the year. But these are ones that I was like, I think would make good gifts for different types of people. Okay, so now we're going to kind of get into the meat, so to speak, because me and Alex are both gamers, and that's kind of where Twig has always kind of excelled in our gaming coverage, because that's what we do. Games and movies are what we excel the most at, then probably books would be our third thing. So we're going to start off with me, and this is not a game per se, but it's for the gamer. Um, you can find this uh, at the link below. You can probably find it on Amazon as well. But it's a PlayStation gift set. And this is more for someone you know who's a fan of the PlayStation brand. So what you get for about 20 bucks is you get a PlayStation keychain, a pen, a pair of PlayStation socks, a journal, which is PlayStation branded, which I'm using for like uh, D&D notes. And you also get a set of four coasters, which are the face buttons from the DualShock uh, controller. They're made of they're made out of like rubber, and I think it's just it's pretty cool. It's kind of like those back to school gift sets you used to get, or ones when you go off to college you'd get from like your your um, kind of res welcome kits sort of thing. And that's why I really liked them. Like, huh, this is kind of like being back in college. Um, so I thoroughly uh, enjoyed that. And so I think that's a pretty good recommendation from me. Uh, the next one, uh, we reviewed this on the show several months ago, and I use it uh, whenever I play online, whenever me and Alex do anything co-op on the Xbox. And that is the PDP... Um, Xbox One Level 50 Wireless Stereo Gaming Headset. It's fantastic. Like, I've reviewed headsets from Astro. I've got Astro A10s right now. And I kind of prefer this thing. It, it has, like, a little USB dongle you plug into your Xbox. You can control the game chat. You can control the volume. And it's just, it's an amazingly good quality headset. Like, I have no interference with it. I have no audio dropouts. I come through nice and clear. The microphone is decent quality. And for the price they're asking for, that's really, really friggin' good. Somebody cut a corner somewhere, and we got an amazing product. So And it's I officially, cannot... like, they're officially licensed, too. Like, I'm, like, I'm right now using the PlayStation version because mm -hmm. uh, they'll work with PCs as well. Um, and actually, at my mom's, I keep... Uh, the wired PlayStation one, and that's just used as headphones, like as daily drivers for everybody in that house. So, like, you know, it's a good headset when it can be used for music and everyday use as well. Yeah, exactly. So, I think that's recommended for the gamer uh, in your family or for yourself. Uh, the next one, uh, the next couple ones for me are going to be games that I that I want to recommend. And this one is the game I've been playing the most, if you're my friend on Xbox Live. But it doesn't matter because this has cross-platform across PC, PS4, and Xbox One. And that's Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Um, the campaign itself is pretty good. Alex uh, and I played through that. Um, Spec Ops. Although, admittedly, still sucks. Um, but the multiplayer is where it's at, man. I have put, um, I think, one day, and I could actually tell you how many hours I've put in. I think it's like one day in like 12 hours so far. I have over 1,500 kills. My K to D ratio is like 0 0.91, which isn't great, but I only play hard points, so fair, fair that in mind. My win-loss ratio is like 3.7. So I kick ass and uh, i frankly fucking love this activision did a fantastic job they just introduced the battle pass which you don't have to pay for you can earn the new guns without paying the thing um or you can pay 10 bucks 
to skip a bunch of tiers if you want and get some stuff a little bit quicker, but you don't have to. And, or there's the premium battle pass, which you just get, you can earn some COD points back so you can just reinvest it in next time's battle pass. So it's using the kind of Fortnite model. But if you don't want to pay for it, you don't have to. The multiplayer is there if you want it. And that's the most reason to play this. The fact that it's cross-platform, you can get all your buddies together. Like if you've been separated by generations of consoles, now you can all play together. I play with a couple of PS4 people. So I never thought we'd have the generation of cross-play like we do now. So thank you everybody for playing nicey nice with each other. Um, my next one is this one's available across uh, all the major consoles like PC, Switch, Xbox One. Um, and PS4, and that's the Disney Classic Lion King Aladdin Collection. This is the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo versions and Game Boy versions of like Aladdin and Lion King, stuff like that. And it has a bunch of extra features. And it's real. I never thought I'd see these older games get like upscaled and remastered. And, like, I'm not talking like a full remaster, but they look better than they traditionally have. Plus there's filters and scan lines and all that stuff. You can kind of fiddle with it. Uh, you can also rewind it. There's like options where you can like have the game play and you can jump in or something, something like that. I haven't had a chance to play around with this a whole shit ton. Um, but I think it's worth noting if you know someone who had these games growing up, then this is something you could totally surprise them with because this is a game that a lot of people slept on. Like, I didn't see a lot of reviews for this game out there at all. A few people talked about it. In fact, I know, if I if I remember this right, I think Victor Lucas's company worked on some of the special features for this game. So there's the Canadian connection, and I'm always going to push that because I think that's really neat. Um, and the last game I want to talk about is actually my pick for Game of the Year this year and this one comes to us from capcom i am going to be recommending resident evil 2 this is a game that was so unexpectedly good um it scared the ever-living shit out of me at times that is until i got the unlimited ammo weapons and turned each of them into my bitch um but yeah like this game it's scary it's atmospheric it's moody you gotta think it's a wonderful update to the original 1998 classic of resident evil 2 and it takes place in the proper timeline uh for resident evil and especially because resident evil 3 will be leaked like tomorrow uh because the box art's already out so my guess is it's gonna we're we're gonna see resident evil 3 nemesis probably around e3 uh next year if not the fall it'll be one of the last titles for the playstation 4 for sure um so yeah those are my picks for gaming this year plus one thing i'll mention is make sure you're checking the xbox and playstation stores around christmas and boxing day because there's always a sale going on and you might find something really neat so keep your eye out for things because this summer i played persona 5 and i picked it up for like 20 bucks and that's probably one of the best gaming purchases i've made in years so uh keep an eye out Okay, uh, now for me, I've got a couple little gaming style accessories. Uh, you know, we talked about the PDP headsets. Uh, I can also say if you're looking for something like one tiered out, like you need something to just connect to the net and like just talk, uh, you can go with what I talked about, I think, earlier last week, which is the uh, LS1 and LS10P slash X headsets. Those are the wired uh, headsets from Lucid Sound. And uh, they're going to provide pretty good quality considering you're getting in, you know, at under a $50 price point. Um, as far as uh, other things go, there's the PDP uh, wired controllers for Xbox they've been putting out. We've had a few of them, like the Rock Candy ones to review, as well as the Kingdom Hearts. Uh, I preferred the Kingdom Hearts one because it is a licensed property and it's pretty, honestly, feels like an actual official controller. It's just a little lighter. Um, because it doesn't have batteries and uses it's wired. Uh, now, also, I would go with the if you're looking for something for your Switch, there's the the uh, PDP Face Off uh, Deluxe Plus Audio. That's the only uh, officially licensed controller on the market that lets you plug your headphones in and use it as uh, as like a wireless headphone device, uh, similar to how you do it with a, an Xbox controller or a PS4. 
So it's it's kind of funny that the official uh, Switch Pro controller doesn't do that, yet the <laughs> Deluxe Plus audio one from PDP does. And for that, uh, I'd have to recommend it. Um, now, as far as games go, I've had a hard time sort of picking my game of the year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to mull over it for a little bit, but they're, these are all contenders in my mind. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, you know, people forget that that came out just very early in the year. January, uh, I think. Yeah, and there's been some DLC and everything come out for it. It's, and it's still high up there. I think people, anybody who was disappointed with it had been building up something that couldn't have pro- possibly been delivered this generation. You know what I mean? People were thinking, how good is it going to be? Well, people were thinking of, you know, what it should be in their mind and not what it could actually be. And I think it pretty much accomplished everything that it could be done this generation. So, uh, you know, it, it's highly recommended. I, you might even have some price drops by now on it. So yeah, I think it was on sale for Black Friday, and I know there's new DLC coming out really soon. Yeah, uh, as well. Uh, if you haven't, if you're like JRPGs and you haven't checked out the Trails of Cold Steel series, uh, I would recommend this is a good time to do so. The first and second game are have been remastered from the previous generation to this generation, and they're like half the price of a regular retail release. So you can get basically two for the price of one, uh, and then. If you have played them, then I highly recommend you check out the third game in the series, which just came out uh, about a month or so ago. Uh, probably some of the best bang for your buck dollar for uh, for gameplay wise, because you to do like a regular playthrough, you're looking at sixty to seventy hours, and it doesn't feel like it. It's it's like you know how you see a movie sometimes, and you're like, wow, that was fast. Mm-hmm. That's actually how it feels, which is surprising considering the length of the games. Uh, I guess it's sort of like when you play when you play Skyrim, like you don't even realize you've sunk like a hundred hours in, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's that sort of feel. So if you like JRPGs, those are great. Um, Judgment was one of the highlights of the year. Um, surprisingly, you know, who, who would have thought that a, a detective thriller mixed with uh, Yakuza slash somewhat RPG elements? It would be good <laughs> and it turns out it's it's one of the better games it's going to be one of the sleepers i think that uh people forget it, it exists and it's, it's unfortunate because sega has been killing it lately with their releases so that's one to check out um fire emblem three houses i, I could mention pokemon and everything but you already know if you're going to get pokemon or not but fire emblem if you're not somebody who's liked strategy games or thought of playing them before It's probably the best one in like 10 years. So Fire Emblem Three Houses, if you've got a Switch and you haven't played it, it's definitely worth it. Uh, As well as, uh, it seems like I'm talking a lot about uh, Nintendo games, but this has just been a really strong year for Nintendo and yeah, Astral Chain. Yeah, this has been a great year for yeah. Like, like, Switch. and the thing is, like, that's why you know you you talked about a few cross platforms. I talked about a couple, like the Kingdom Hearts is cross platform, uh, but. This has been like Nintendo's year for sure. It's sort of been a, a bit of a lull for everybody else. There's a lot of like good, um, you know, third party titles, but there hasn't been a lot of fantastic ones. Um, so Astral Chain is, you know, it might get lost in the shuffle of big, big, big Nintendo releases. And I can say like it's it's Platinum Games and it's Platinum Games A Team. So you know, it, it's you know, it's going to be one of the best action games out there. They they push the system so hard that at times it almost looks like a PS4 game, which, you know, and, and I'm not being like a graphics snob or anything, but like if you didn't know it was a Nintendo game, you wouldn't re- you wouldn't think it was on the Switch. Like they do some sort of weird magic there to make it look and feel like it's playing on a hardware that's more powerful than it really is. And I, I think it might get lost in between, you know, the releases like we had Kirby, you had, uh, there Link. was like Link. There's a Pokemon. There's um, there in the last twelve Luigi's months. Mansion. Yeah, yeah. Luigi's Mansion, and even like you know, we're looking at a year ago with Smash, right? Like in twelve months, there have been like ten triple A titles first party for the Switch, which is insane. So uh, that's the one where I think you know you shouldn't sleep on it. Pick it up if you can. Uh, and luckily, because it's published by Nintendo, it shouldn't be too hard to find. It's not going to be one that disappears. And uh, that's probably going to do it for, for gaming-wise. Like, again, there's so many things out there, but these are the ones that I think, if you have a Switch, pick up any of those. Uh, and again, I, I like recommending RPGs. Uh, probably RPG of the year would be Trails of Cold Steel 3, but um, 
give you know all those a look at the very least and uh, if you can't go wrong with any of of your recommendations either yeah so that's pretty much going to do it for our holiday gift guide and uh this will be one of the last shows that we do regularly this year there's going to be a couple more specials we're probably going to have one holiday commentary we're going to do the long way to die hard um as you will as you know from earlier this week um as i talked about why we're only doing so much during the holidays this year it's it's been a rough rough two weeks for birdman um so but anyway with that in mind we want to extend our warmest holiday wishes and thoughts with you especially knowing what's happened with me and seeing how much my family has come together christmas this year takes on a new special meaning and it's more than just presents it's more than just um getting stuff it's about sharing moments with family sharing moments with people you consider your family and we're finally at a time where i see this more and more on social media um like there's i guess it's it's like a meme or a post or something like that and it says something along the lines of don't be afraid to tell your friends you love them and don't be afraid to do that like this holiday season even if you don't buy anything off our holiday gift guide, which I'm sure will piss off some people we're sending coverage to, um, tell someone you love them. Because that, in essence, is a gift in and of itself. It's a memory. And it might mean something to them down the road. Like, tell your best friend you love them. Or just, just spread that holiday cheer however you can this year. Because we're coming into 2020. We're coming in hot because this year's been a million years long, and thank God it's over. So, um, from yeah. us here at Twig, Alex, you you say something. I just yeah, I just want to chime in as well. Don't go crazy. Like we're past Black Friday already, but you know, don't go nuts when you go shopping. Don't be rude to people. Don't cut people off. Don't you know scream at somebody for taking your parking space. That that defeats the, the whole point of the season. You know, yeah. uh, be forgiving, be friendly, uh, be try to be cheerful, celebrate with your friends. If you can't find that gift that you think they have to have, their family, their friends, they'll love you anyway. It doesn't matter if you can't get the exact thing that you think you have to get them. It's the thought that always counts. And, you know, be safe out there, drive safe, don't drink and drive. And, you know, just take a moment to slow down. That's all I have to say. Yes. So from us here at This Week in Geek, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, I think, and any other religious holiday I may Festivus. have missed. Festivus, yes, for the rest of us. Got a lot so, of problems with you people. <laughs> so while me and Alex go tend to the trials of strength, we hope you have a fantastic holiday. We will see you with more regular shows in the second week of January. We will still have some more stuff coming out, so keep it looked looking on our Twitter and Facebook page for more information on that. So until then, we have been Alex. I've been Mike the Birdman Dodd saying, live for your diehard. And as my friend Jackie Bam Bam might say, be cool, be kind, be careful. We'll catch you guys again real soon, right here on thisweekingeek.net. Well, that's our show. All right, here's the deal. Every time you watch my show, I will send you $40. Checks will not be honored. You've been listening to This Week in Geek. Your source for guaranteed nonsense or your money back. Tune in next week for more info on the most important things you didn't need to know. Check out our website at thisweekingeek.net and subscribe to our podcast through iTunes or any podcatcher. If you'd like to comment on this episode, head over to this episode's post at thisweekingeek.net and leave a comment through Facebook Connect. Follow us on Twitter at thisweekingeek.net and follow our Instagram at twig underscore official underscore podcast. Social media not your thing? Send us an email at feedback at thisweekingeek.net. We'll see you next time, and remember... Lower your shields and surrender your listenership. Just when you think this show is terrible, something wonderful happens. What? It ends. <laughs> I have to go. Somewhere there is a crime happening. As for the rest of you, I'm going to tear off your skin like wrapping paper and deck the holes with your guts. <laughs> Fuck you, Santa, fuck you, Santa, fuck you, Santa.